Welcome back to the TNET project. So we are in process two, and we're going to go ahead and cut the profile of the TNET. So let's take a quick look at this uh, in your plans, and you'll find these on the back page of your instruction sheet, and you'll see your TNET, and you'll notice it's color-coded. And what we're going to do is we're going to make the cuts that define the blue width, overall width of the part, which is 0 0.850. And then we're also going to make the cuts that define the green notches, as well as we're going to surface the top of uh, the part itself. So to help you, let's look at a model of the part. So here's the part itself, the finished part, two dimensions. You'll notice that the colors coordinate with your plans. And if I roll back the model here, you'll see that that's the block we start with. We've machined the two ends, and our next step here is to go ahead and start to make the cuts that form the part. So this is the first cut that forms the profile on the front edge, and then we cut on the back edge, and that defines the overall depth of the part at 0.850. Next, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to cut the top and the bottom, the two notches on the part. And now we have our part, the profile of it. Now you're going to notice a couple things here. The first thing is this obviously has to stick out the top of the vise. Otherwise our tool is going to hit the vise. The second thing is we have to get a smooth top on it. So let's start out with mounting the part of the vise. Verify our length in step one. Then what I'd like you to do is to take a 1 and 5 8 inch vise or sorry, parallel, and mount it into the vise. Now you're going to get about 0.625 inches worth of stick out. Verify that by uh, using a uh, depth probe on a caliper. We need to get about 0 0.550 inches for our cut depth, which is shown where my cursor is flashing. Once you've got it mounted in the center of the vise, it does not matter which side you put up, we're going to do a facing operation. That facing operation is going to go around the perimeter, and we're going to go around the perimeter with a very light cut, uh, and then we're going to make a last cut right down the middle of the perimeter. So let's take a look at how we do that in a video. So see my part mounted. I've got my tool into the machine, and what I'm going to do is start it spinning over the top of the part. Uh, I bring it first down into the vicinity of the surface, and then I use my knee adjustment to bring the part up until the tool just touches. I'll both hear and see it touch. Once it touches, I want to zero my knee micrometer. I'll then adjust about another 50 thousandths in depth. Apply some cutting fluid, and then I'm going to go ahead and clear and start my cut. Now in this instance, it is a conventional mill cut going around the part, and we're going around the part edge. You can make this a climb cut, as I've shown in the instructions, or a conventional cut, as what is shown here. You'll notice on the cuts around the perimeter, about one-fourth of the tool diameter is hanging off the edge of the part. This cut is doing nothing more than leveling out the top and giving us a reference for Z0. That's why my knee micrometer needs to be re-zeroed to read Z0. So now that we've got the top of the part faced, we've done two things. The first thing we've done is we've made it flat and true. But the second thing we've also done is we've established Z0. So our next step is going to position our tool in the front left corner of the part and then using the knee micrometer, you're going to go ahead and raise the knee which lowers the tool 550 thousandths. Now that 550 thousandths depth is for us to make this first cut across the front of your part. The cut that's shown on your screen in blue. This establishes the overall depth for the total part. You'll notice again that the face in blue is, that we're gonna, is what we're going to cut. That depth is 550 thousandths deep. So let's take a look at that. So my tool is off the left-hand side. As I've discussed, my knee uh, micrometer is zero. I'm now turning the knee uh, so that it raises 
the table. As a table comes up, I'm cross-checking between my micrometer and my tool. My tool should always clear my vise. It's about five and a half turns to get it down to depth. There's not a lot of slop in this, so be sure that you compute it correctly and you don't collide the tool into the vise. When you're finished, you should see a picture that looks like this. The tool is just above the vise in 550 thousandths below the surface that you faced up. So we've got our tool to depth, and now what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, position our tool towards where it says the number one here. We want to be off to the left-hand side in the front of the part. Uh, and then what we want to do is select eight on the DRO. And what that does is it sets the tool offset for a cut so that the material is above the tool. That's kind of an important step here. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to zero the DRO. Now what I want you to do is to bring your tool in and just barely touch the front face. And then we're going to adjust our DRO for a 50 thousandths deep cut along the face from left to right as shown. You'll want to zero your DRO when you make that cut. That is going to be the zero datum for the Y coordinates of this part. Let's watch. So I've got the tool running and I'm in the front left edge of the part. First I'll bring the tool in just ever so carefully until I touch. Once I can feel and hear the tool touch, I'm now going to come over here and select the 8. I'm going to go ahead and zero my DRO, move it off to the side, and then what I want to do is dial in about a 50 thousandths cut. lock the ways, and we're going to cut from left to right. I zero the Y on my DRO again. That's my Y datum. So there's the touch, the move over, dial in my cut, re-zero my DRO, apply some lubricant, and now start making my cut. We're doing a conventional mill pass. Remember, slowly feed the tool in. You'll feel it starting to cut. Nice smooth cut. You should have straw colored chips coming off without any kind of excessive vibration or noise. I want to cut all the way through the part from left to right. This establishes the front edge or Y0 datum for my part. I will not retouch the Y datum for the rest of the project. Now the next step that we have to do is we now have to cut the back of the part. So now we're going to establish our 0 .850 total width of the base of the part. So once again when we look at our plans it's 0 .850 where my cursor is flashing. So to do that, what we want to do is reposition our tool to the back edge of the cut, but now we're going to have to select the 2 button, which sets the diameter offset for cutting where the tool is in front of the stock. So let's watch that video. So first what I'm going to do is select the 2 button on my digital readout. Now I'm going to move my tool to the back edge and you'll notice that I'm going to go to about a 0 .950 cut. That will be about a hundred thousandths depth cut on your first pass. My tool is on the right hand side of the part as you'll see in the next video briefly. Once I get to 0 .950 I want to lock my ways in the Y axis and then get ready to do my cut. Let's watch the tool path. I'm going to start my tool up spinning and then move to the back edge of my part. And I'm at about 0 .950 in depth. Sorry, the tool wasn't moving there. Apply a little bit of a lubricant, start my tool spinning, and make a conventional mill cut. That is going to be from the right 
to the left on the back edge of the part. You're cutting about a hundred thousandths off. Again, nice smooth motion. You should see straw colored chips coming off of your part. You'll make the first pass at 950 thousandths in depth. Once you clear the part, you can go ahead and reset your tool back to the right hand side. Adjust the next cut to be exactly 0 0.850 deep. Apply some lubricant and make your next cut. At this point, you should use a micrometer, measure your part dimensions, and be sure that you are 0.850 on the total depth of the part. This is the end of process two, and when you're done with this, you should have a part that looks something like this. The black edges are held in the vise, the blue are the last two cuts that you just made, and the overall depth of your part here is 0.850 inches. Thanks for watching.